Congress and Russian monitors are meeting to discuss ways to decrease violence in Syria ahead of a new round of peace talks starting on Monday in Geneva. The US has accused the Syrian regime of violating the ceasefire with airstrikes on civilians in Aleppo and Daraa on Friday. The bombings killed at least 10 people and injured 15 others. Well, for more on this story, I'm now joined by Omar Lamrani. He's a senior military analyst at Stratfor and joins us now. Thank you very much for your time. Do you think these latest allegations then of strikes in Aleppo, do they put the Geneva talks in jeopardy, do you think? Yes, because um, the Geneva talks want to take advantage of the lull in fighting in Syria to push through through some difficult negotiations that, that hope to reach a political solution. And um, these accusations of ceasefire violations, the, uh, inc the continuous fighting on the ground undermines that effort and um, pushes the, uh, the parties that are supposed to be negotiating with each other in more into the, uh, into the war fighting mindset rather than the negotiating uh, stance. We do have Russian and US officials meeting at the moment, meeting on Saturday ahead of the talks, which begin in earnest, I suppose, or are meant to begin in earnest on Monday. What do you think those Russian and US officials will be discussing today in terms of laying out the groundwork? What specifics? Well, I think they would, um, they would try to coordinate in terms of the uh, allegations of, um, of ceasefire violations, both the Russians and the Americans. They're on, on the polar opposite sides of the, uh, of the um, conflict in terms of uh, the, uh, the, 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 their forces on the ground. So, for instance, the Russians are going to be speaking to the loyalist government and trying to pressure them into not uh, to, um, doing ceasefire violations, and the United States would be, able, would be doing the same. Uh, both the United States and the Russians are one of the primary actors that are really pushing for this, uh, for this transition talks to happen. So they have to keep their proxies and their allies um, on, on board with the same plan. I suppose the answer to this next question depends on who you talk to, but what would constitute a success from these talks in Geneva? Yeah, it would depend. But um, I mean, so first of all, we have to understand that chances of a comprehensive agreement are rather slim because all sides are still very much in their maximalist positions. So initial agreements towards, um, towards um, a framework with fixed dates uh, towards perhaps elections um, is already a step in the right direction. Um, talking about issues like what happens to President Assad is, is something that cannot be really expected to succeed at this point, just because they're not, they're not even really talking directly to each other, uh, the government and the rebels, they're, already, they're only at the uh, phase where they're using intermediaries to talk to each other through these talks. So, so uh, I mean, we can't be too ambitious in terms of what can come out of, out of, out of these negotiations at this time. And I suppose it's imperative that the cessation of hostilities holds. Do you see that being extended? Well, that's the hope. I mean, there are considerable risks to the ceasefire. It's, it's, right now, it's very fragile. There's continuous violations. And there's also the fact that uh, there's groups that are not even included in the ceasefire, groups like Nusra, which has an, um, which has an, an imperative to undermine these ceasefires. The, so, so really, it's very fragile, remains very fragile. And the only hope right now is that it it's continues to, uh, to uh, lessen the violence more than, more than it's being effective in halting all the violence. Okay, Omar Lamrani, thank you very much for your time.